Welcome to another SIDAR webinar. Looking forward to spending the next 30 to 40 minutes with you and really unpacking at quite a high level of you know, volume and detail or velocity and detail, three important board deliverables to mitigate risk. We are living in really interesting times. My name is Roger Hitchcock. I have the privilege of spending you know, many of my days speaking to, engaging with boards around a whole range of issues. One of them that has become really, really important over the last year or so, as we know, is this concept of um, risk. And so we're going to look at what steps can we take as a board to mitigate some of the risk, to manage some of the risk, less from a risk management point of view and more from a point of view of how do we actually take those steps proactively going forward. We'd love as well as we go through the webinar this morning, this afternoon to, to really spend some time you know, engaging and chatting. I have in front of me the chat box, the Q&A box. Please use those to engage throughout. We'll also provide opportunity at the end of the webinar. And as we draw into the end, I'll also indicate that you're welcome to ask questions and drop um, any comments into the chat box. As we start though, just so you can get your, your chat box fingers warmed up, be great to know where you're based. I know from the registrations that people are based all over the place and it'll be really interesting to, as we start, just let us know where you're based, what the weather's like there. I'm presenting to you from Pretoria, South Africa. We have another glorious summer's day in the early 30s. So nice and warm here um, on a Friday afternoon. It'll be great to know where you are you know, sitting. So please drop that into the chat box as we start this webinar. Obviously 2020 is a year that we all want to forget in a sense, but we've also found that the first few months of 2021 have continued to highlight some massive questions. We've, we operate in the boardroom, we operate with companies throughout mainly the African continent, but also beyond. We have clients in you know, the further, further um, east of us and some clients on the further west of us. Um, great, Nelson, to see you from Nairobi. Glad to be attending. Lovely sunny afternoon there as well. I know I'll, I have missed going through to Kenya. Um, I used to travel there at least monthly. Um, enjoy certainly the mild weather you have there. But also having engaged with people in these you know, regions throughout Africa, there are still lots of questions that remain unanswered for us, especially as we go into the balance of 2021. Um, and this time of year is often one where we're, when we're reflecting. I know many companies are going through their financial year end. Normally in the first kind of six months, there's often a lot of that kind of focus. And we're trying to wrap up. We're trying to get over, learn from what we've seen in the last year. But a lot of this is about, you know, really <laughs> acknowledging that the uphill battle continues. Um, and part of that uphill battle that continues is we have to take a step back from our companies and start to consider quite strongly what are things we can do. We have gone through the initial chaos of about this time last year where we were coming to grips with this thing called a pandemic and a global pandemic. A lot of companies focused or boards focused on the immediate, focused on what lay immediately ahead of them, quite legitimately so. As the year ended, as 2020 ended, Many companies looked up and said, well, what are the things that we need to see a bit further into the, into the future? And so what I want to do is I want to spend a bit of time saying, well, what lies in that, in that interim period? Um, looking ahead as well to the, the end of the webinar, we're going to offer you an opportunity to meet with one of our, our team. We have a very well qualified, very well experienced team covering all kinds of areas in the boardroom, um, from understanding the knowledge and the technicalities to actually putting in place systems and processes to facilitating board conversations that are often not that e easy to have. And so what we'd like to do at the end of this webinar is um, we'll drop a questionnaire onto, onto the chat box. You'll also get an email follow-up to this with the opportunity to you know, fill in a few questions and book a 30-minute consult with one of our senior partners, um, especially to address some of the issues that you're facing and possibly some of the things that come out of the, our time together this afternoon. Thanks Fritz and Sola, nice to see you joining from other parts of um, uh, the, the world from Germany. Um, I trust that you are also looking forward to summer ahead and it's not too cold there for you. What we're also gonna do, and as you see from the images is, you know, we, we, we use as a metaphor in Siddhar, often the metaphor of journeying and climbing mountains and working our way towards um, on a journey 
towards an objective. And so what I want to do in this time together is identify three waypoints on the journey through 2021 and you know, find these waypoints because these are things that can mark out our journey as well as mitigate risk because what we don't want to do in 2021 is lose our way. 2020 has been chaotic. We need to find our way, find a new way in many cases and move forward. It's not a time for our companies, our boards and leadership teams to be sitting back and waiting because the answers have to come from within our organizations themselves. And so the first one of those waypoints, and it's a word that has been often used is this concept of scale and scaling business. I call it scalability. Because what the challenge for our businesses is to do is many of us are relieved that we are through at least a portion of this crisis and the chaos. In other words, we need to recognize that we've got to one summit. And part of you know, our working with many companies is recognizing that getting through 2020 was, in many cases, like scaling a summit. But what one is next? Because we can, as we've dropped and had to drop our timeframes and our projections from often a longer term, many companies in 2019 were anticipating 2030 going through some really exciting strategic thinking processes because of the next decade that lay ahead of us. And in 2020, all of that, in a sense, collapsed. And we have to now start looking and saying, let's find that next summit. And certainly, it won't necessarily lie way ahead of us, a decade ahead of but it needs to lie significantly ahead, 2022, 2023. We're not going to get back into a long-term vision of things unless we actually start to stretch our thinking beyond the, the immediate. And part of that is also ensuring that we make decisive decisions. I think one of the things I've seen many, many companies do, and we've also been through it because obviously as Sadar, we've been through it ourselves, is there have been times when we, we honestly haven't really known what to do um, in our own business. We've ensured that we haven't stayed in that place because that place is a very dangerous place to be. This hand reaching out to, to grab the, the next hold on the mountain climb is often like that's a period. We don't want to be indecisive there. And so what we need to do, and one of the things building scalability or the ability to scale, the ability to respond even in our businesses is to make sure that we have very clear decision-making processes. We've designed them given the current environment, recognizing that we're not in many cases reaching for longer term visions, we're reaching for often the medium term as opposed to the long term. Um, we also need to make sure they're implemented and part of the implementation of decision making is ensuring that people are held accountable. At the end of the day, and one of the key things we'll look at is, is, is our team today, but if we don't hold people accountable for the systems that we design in the business, for following them through, for going through them, for applying them and implementing them. Too often we design processes, but it's holding people accountable because ultimately the performance in our business, scalable performance comes from people and systems working together. And that working together starts with design. If nothing else, this is an opportunity to step back from your businesses and apply some design thinking to saying, what will still work? What will no longer work? What is permanent in terms of change? What is temporary in terms of change? And through those parameters, really pin down some of the key areas that we need to work in, in both our people and our systems. Skill sets that we had in the past that made sure we were successful are not necessarily the skill sets that'll make the future successful. Systems we had in the past that were built around assumptions um, that existed then may not be the same that we have at present. What is essential as well, and part of this, part of this design process is that the design process in organizations and of organizations falls into what we call governance. And it's widely recognized through many, many surveys that companies that are better governed perform better. And when I say better governed, I don't mean tick the box. I mean designing systems, processes, policies to deliver the strategies that we have determined and the paths to take us along the paths that we need to go through. And so this isn't just the case of, um, as we know in today's world about only financial performance, but it's also about our wider range of stakeholders that we need to take into account. And what governance does for us is it helps us to anticipate the future, design for the future, 
and then holds people accountable in the present for what they need to do. And that's essentially what I mean by this first concept of scalability. The ability to scale comes from well-designed, well-implemented, and accountable or systems that hold people accountable in the process. So that's number one, that's the first thing. And if that's on your mind, then, and that's something you need to do and maybe need a few handles to do that, then get hold of us at the end of this webinar and book one of those consults and get one of our team members, but put that into your comments because then we know which way to direct you in terms of who's best to take you through that time together. The second thing we need to understand and recognize and too often what I've seen, especially with, with strategy, is strategy is boiled down to a set of objectives or targets. Whereas actually strategy is about understanding that we need to go through transitions to get to the next transition. It's a process of transitions through time as opposed to just achieving objectives and achieving targets. And so one of the dangers that we find with many growing businesses, especially founder-led businesses, is that the reluctance to go through some of the transitions is what is, is results in what we call the entrepreneurial trap. Many people start businesses, they found businesses, they establish businesses to be free, to create freedom, to create financial freedom, to create time freedom. And yet they find a few years later that they're not free um, because they are tied into the businesses that they that they they operate. And their time is often the thing that that is 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 removed, the options around that. And so one of the challenges of entrepreneurs, and it relates to the first stage, but it's recognizing that we need to transition a business from ourselves or from a core team upon which the business is dependent to a system and an enterprise. And that's one of the biggest transitions or initial transitions that businesses need to go through to, to build a system away from the founder of the, of the business. If in your business, you are involved in every single decision. You're asked every single question. You feel that you have to control every single thing that goes on. You're in danger of either being in or falling into, falling deeper into the entrepreneurial trap. And that's not good business. It's not good governance because governance is about the enterprise that delivers the result, the journey, as opposed to the person or the group of people that deliver the result. And that's a mindset shift that good governance helps us get to. And so it's identifying what, are the, what is the way out of that? If right now you're sitting and you know the business is 100% dependent on your involvement at every stage, you've got to say, what are the stages or phases out of that? Understanding that that is a process of design, accountability, implementation, and development. And then applying the different types of thinking. When we approach a transition, so think of a journey. When we're approaching a mountain, there's one way of journeying. When we're climbing the mountain, there's another way of journeying, another set of skills. When we are going over the top or approaching the next summit, we have another set of skills. And you often see this in business, the concept of the S curves in business, that businesses don't grow in a straight line, but they grow through a series of curves. That's exactly the point. Businesses need different transitions or need different things at different transition processes in their journey. And so it's really important that we follow a proven methodology that doesn't, that guides us and doesn't trap us. Now the tick the box approach to governance traps us because we are stuck in a compliance mindset that we're simply there to tick the box. A methodology that helps us think through the themes that we need to engage with, think through the critical areas we need to engage with helps us move ahead because a methodology that is that is flexible but broad helps us identify what we need at what stage of the of the journey and at Sadar we use a methodology called the Sadar Enterprise Governance Compass which essentially says that there are four key points we have to keep intention or balance at all times the journey ahead our purpose and strategy what we leave behind sustainability and returns and those are in a sense on a timeline, we're accountable for both the destination as well as the impact. We're also accountable to keep two things in tension all the time, the performance of the business and applying the rules or obeying the rules, the, le the legal framework, the legislative framework and our own rule sets that we operate within. You know, a sports team doesn't run on the field and only win by performing. They win by both performing and conforming. 
but they also don't just win by conforming and much of our governance is focused a lot on that and so it's getting the mindset right and so navigating transitions is about ensuring that we apply the different types of thinking to the different parts of the journey and that's a process that we at Sadar can help you through because we've assisted many companies through their stages whether it's the company that wants to realize the group of founders that want to realize the shareholding value that they've built up over years and yet can't transition that and exit the business operationally and enjoy the benefits as purely shareholders you know, whether realizing at a point in time that there is the value we thought was there isn't there because it's a, it's dependent on us and so exiting from that entrepreneurial trap is such an important thing to do and that's a significant transition and then it all boils around as well and i think one of the key things that has become really essential in today's world is to change the view of how we select our teams. And here we're thinking specifically around the team of the board. The team of the board, the role of the board has become highlighted more and more over the last 10, 12, 15 years, simply because of the chaos and crises that many company, companies have gone into and been through. And people have said, where did the leadership sit? Who was leading the, that organization? And the reality is that the assumption in law is that the board is the leadership team of the, of the company. And so we have to move away from what I call a default team, either a team that looks alike, thinks alike, acts alike. So when we're thinking of people to put on our boards or growing our leadership team in, in, in company, it's very easy for us to say, well, you know, who do I know that's like me? Because surely they will help. Actually, the opposite thinking is essential because you need people on your team that complement your skill sets. We've often seen this and, and it creates an interesting dynamic because a board should consist of people who are different, who have different perspectives, who look different. That's where the whole diversity issue comes from, who that comprises of a whole lot of people who, who are bringing different skill sets, bringing different perspectives, bringing different ways of thinking to the, to the table. One of the best examples I have of, of, of that, and it was a, an example of how governance, both team and structure, can break massive, massive boundaries. And for some of you, I know that some of you are, are online from, from, from East Africa and from Kenya, and whenever I'm in Kenya, this was exciting for me because I'm a, a long-term runner, don't run as much as I used to. But when I saw this attempt in 2019, I think it was, to break the two hour barrier for a 42 kilometer distance. Now it wasn't an official marathon, obviously, but the way that the team who designed the process and the form and the structure went about not just designing a structure to break the barrier, but also ensuring that there were different teams. So Elliot Kipchoge is the person in white. He was the one attempting to break this barrier. Around him, you see one of his teams that supported him. The total team that helped him run this distance consisted of over 40 runners. The vast majority of them were not marathon runners. They were 10,000 meter runners, 5,000 meter runners. They ran stints and they transitioned in this very specific format with a very specific methodology. They needed to run every single kilometer in an average of two minutes and 10 seconds per kilometer, which is blisteringly fast. They ran the slowest kilometer in two minutes and eight, in 12 seconds, the fastest kilometer, except the last one, which was even faster in two minutes and eight seconds. They kept consistent because of the system and the team. And so the team selection is really identifying what is really needed. And the team selection is not about the individual team members, it's about the company. You see the individual board member is there to serve the board, that is there to serve the company. And so we've got to start by asking, what does the company need? And if you take a step back from your company right now and say, what are some of the challenges you're facing in your company? That helps you identify what kind of skill set you need. It also implies an intentional selection process because we want to find people that are not like us, which means we may not be the best people to try to find those people. They will probably sit outside our realm of expertise and experience and knowledge. And it's about looking widely and deeply. We use a number of tools to do this. Um, 
We use one in particular that helps us identify not just skill sets. So obviously, we look at skills, we look at aligning values, we look at skills of directing, but we use a tool called the Contribution Compass to ensure that when we're thinking about the range of people sitting around the table, we don't only have the right skill mix, but we also have the right mix of what we would call personal profiles. And underlying the personal profiles is this concept we call natural energy. You see, different people naturally move towards or look at the world in different ways. Some people engage with the world on a very high level, ideas generated, activating, you know, initiating way. Other people view the world in a sustaining, let's keep it going sense. And you can see some of those, those emphases there. The principle at board level though, is if we have too many of one type of person, we will both do probably overemphasize some areas, but we will certainly underemphasize others. And when we look at this and we do profiles on the teams we work with, we often find the areas they're good at are highly aligned with where they have lots of people in that profile. The areas that they miss out on or are not good at are where they have no people or very few people in that space. And so it's really about using the right tools and expertise to select the team. This is where absolutely essential. It's something we need to you know, initiate ourselves, but often is best done by an outside party that can help us look objectively at our own team. Part of the entrepreneurial trap that I mentioned a bit earlier is that we tend to see the world the way we see the world. And what we need at board level is we need, see, we need people around the table who are sharing the liability and accountability for the business with us, who see the world in different ways to us. And so that's what we really emphasize. And one of the key things, and when we invest in other companies, we don't want to look for companies that are only run by one or two people. When we invest in companies and we you know, put investment into businesses, we want to see a team, a board, a group of people that all together support the value of the business and increase its value. And yet what we do is we often rely on ourselves or our close group of people to build the value that we've invested in. And so if you step outside and think of yourself as the investor in your business, would you be appointing the people who are sitting around your board? And I know that's a tough question, but we've also found that boards with at least one independent director, someone who comes with an outside perspective, an outside view, outperform boards without one. Companies with more diverse boards outperform companies with very with boards. The default boards look alike, think alike, act alike. And so those three key transition points or those three key markers or waypoints on the journey, what we wanted to cover today. And as we you know, come to the end, I'd love you to drop any questions or comments onto the, onto the chat um, or onto the Q&A um, functionality on the webinar. But think about your businesses. Is what summit are you at and what summit do you need to reach out for into the future? What transitions lie between you and that summit? Because obviously there are journeys and paths you need to take that you haven't taken before. And when we think about the team, what skill set do you need to take you into the future? Because all three of these, scalability, navigating transitions, and ensuring team fit are things that lie in the future. And so one of the most important orientations for boards is to be future focused, because if we don't, if we get it wrong, this is where the risk comes in. We're trying to mitigate the risk of having to be rescued, all right? Because in today's world, it's not that easy. When we have a business, we have people who are accountable, um, we're accountable to, who rely on us. Um, and the cost of getting some of these things wrong is significant, because if we don't get it right, we may have lost opportunity. We're not, we're, we're not looking ahead and so anticipating what lies ahead. In today's world, our reputation could take a massive knock if we do the wrong things or take the wrong positions. And for many of us, we've built businesses, grown businesses with a view to saying, I would like to look back at the end of my life and say, I have left a legacy. And many legacies are destroyed because we haven't thought ahead in terms of scalability, navigating transitions and ensuring team fit. And so, last couple of minutes, questions, comments, please put them into the chat box. Um, and then I'm going to drop a poll onto the, onto the group while you're thinking, um, you know, to ask the question, you know, what have been your biggest um, insights or your biggest learnings 
from today? You know, what three things, of these three things, um, what have you picked up most? And especially identifying the needs in your business. Um, not just what have you learned, but what actually are you going to think of applying? If you had to ask a question to one of our team um, in that 30-minute consult that we're offering, what would you um, what would you be asking them? Would you be asking them about the systems and process and the implementation and the accountability? Would you be asking them about getting through the current challenges and what lies ahead? Would you be asking them about the team and helping you to assist the team fit? So I'm just going to give you a couple of minutes to minute or so to to um, fill in that poll, and then I will return in a minute. And also, if there are any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to drop them onto the chat box. Thanks. Um, great. A lot of you saying navigating the transitions. You know, I think that's one of the biggest challenges we've seen. And so it's about creating a practical map um, for your board to follow. And we can certainly assist you in, in doing that. I'll end this poll and I'll just you know, share, the, share the results with you so you can see what you, know, what you have said there. Um, significant number of you saying that actually it's the navigating transitions, but also the other two areas as well. Um, thanks, Nelson. Um, but we're also going to be providing you after this webinar with a, as I said, there'll be a link. And if you can also just drop it in and I'm going to quickly pick up the, the link. Um, the link, you'll get a link after, after this webinar and an email to answer some questions um, and book your 30 minute consult for the, um, with one of our senior partners. And I do encourage you to prepare for that in the sense of saying, well, what are the three areas? What of the three areas are you, you know, looking at at navigating, you know, going going forward? Um, and so, in summary, again, I would like to just get you to fill in another another poll because, again, it's important for us to ensure that when we present these kind of um, events, they're insightful, they are practical, and they're also relevant. And so I'd like you, if you wouldn't mind just completing as we close the webinar, um, thanks for some of the comments. Um, if there are any questions that you'd like to drop into the quick Q and A box, please do that. Otherwise after this, if you can just complete the poll and then we will close the webinar after that. Thank you. Thanks very much for your time. And if you look at the chat box, I've just dropped the questionnaire into the, um, the link, SurveyMonkey link. If you want to, right now you can respond, you can complete the questionnaire, click on that link. We'll also, as I said, send it to you in the email that is going to follow up on this, on this webinar. And please be in touch with us. Please respond if there are areas we can help you with. But please um, book your time with one of our senior partners as a follow-up. And all the very best for the balance of your Friday. We're now almost halfway through March, trusting that in 2021, you will be successful in navigating some of the transitions, in building scalability in your businesses, ensuring that you can navigate the transitions that lie ahead of you, and also ensuring team fit. All the very best. Cheers.